Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're going to try and tackle several viewer requests in one video. They all focus around the ManPad, Man Portable Air Defense System, the scourge of the modern combat pilot. One request you guys asked is, are these effective against 5th gen stealth aircraft? And we will look into that, of course, also. Another inspiration is Sinai campaign day one. We had a flight of four F-15Es. We were tasked to hunt insurgent convoys down and drop cluster bombs on them from moderately low altitude. All went well, we found the convoys, we dropped our bombs and then we headed home. But as soon as we headed home, what we weren't told about is there were man pads operating in the area. Just two Iglers, these guys here, proceeded to shoot down four F-15Es. Those F-15Es come to a cost of, I think, more than a quarter of a billion dollars, plus the hugely experienced pilots and payloads and whatnot, taken down by, what, $20,000 worth of manpad fired by users with almost no training at all. It's a real equalizer. So as well as the stealth thing, we're just going to look at man pads in general and do some testing, some science, and a bit of a talk about them. So first, let's just talk about the basics. They've been in operation since the 1950s until present. There are several countries which have made several variants. Tens of thousands are scattered about the world in official militaries and even available on the black market. They vary in their performance, but a general rule of thumb is if you are flying below 20,000 feet, you are not safe from a man pad. They come in three types, infrared guided systems, command line of sight systems and laser guided systems. Infrared is by far the most common and that's what we'll be looking at today. In terms of the infrared systems, it works very simply. All aircraft have internal combustion engines, whether they are piston or turbine based. They suck in cold air and they blow out hot gas, very hot gas, hundreds of degrees. The seeker head on the man pad missile will scan a small area of sky, see that hot gas known as an air plume behind the aircraft, fire, track its way to that heat plume, and then when it gets close enough to the offending aircraft, it will either have a proximity fuse or a brush fuse, explode near or on the aircraft. Man pads are very small, lightweight systems. They have to be carried around by soldiers, so their warheads are very small, often just two or three pounds. Now, you compare that to something like a modern AMRAAM air-to-air -air missile, which has about a 70-pound warhead. Two or three pounds doesn't sound very much, but they are amazingly effective. I'm always amazed how effective these systems are. Quite often, they will be fired from a rear aspect. They will home in on the plume of the aircraft and explode on or near the rear empennage of the aircraft, which is a very weak point for any aircraft, especially fighters. Just minor damage to the horizontal or vertical stabilizers can jam or partially disable them, leading almost certainly to the aircraft crashing. So aircraft have developed countermeasures to these systems. There are various countermeasures. In terms of stealth, Raptors and F-35s in reality will never have to worry about man pads. Why? Well, they've been given radar stealth properties. They are designed to fly high above 20,000 feet outside the reach of almost all man pads, which is, of course, the best defense from them. As well as that, there are active countermeasures like flares, hot incendiary devices sent out to fool the seek ahead of the missile coupled with maneuvering of the aircraft and throttle modulation. The less throttle you have on your engine, the cooler the plume is. Also, more intelligent countermeasures. We can talk about the F-35. It has something known as a DAS. I always forget what the acronym means, but it basically means there are six optical and thermal cameras scattered about on the aircraft, giving a full 360, or should I say severical, view of any heat sources around it. That could be a missile that's threatening the aircraft. It could be a hostile plane that's threatening the aircraft. The computer systems on board can then analyze that and either take action itself Self or tell the pilot. If it's, for instance, a missile coming towards the aircraft, it could then automatically send out flares to fool the missile. Now, DAS itself 
is, I think, only available on the F-35, but it's not actually a modern concept. If we go back 30 years, or why don't we take this A-10C here from 20 years ago, this had something called MWS, the, I guess, precursor, you would call it, to DAS. It had a series of thermal sensors around the aircraft, giving not a full spherical coverage, but a kind of 360 ring coverage, which would detect incoming heat sources, missiles. It would tell the pilot and either ask him or advise him to send flares out, or if set on fully automatic, it would send out the flares itself. Another method is making your aircraft very tough. An F-35 is not designed to be hit by a three-pound warhead. Neither is a Raptor, neither is an F-14, but an A-10 kind of is. It's part of its job description. An SU-25 kind of is. Routinely, these aircraft get hit by man pads and have been in modern and historical battles and have survived. As well as that, certain passive measures can be taken. Like I said, the seeker head on the missile looks for the heat plume, the contrast, the intensity of that heat as compared to the background. Now, a lot of people say that the F-35 is designed to have a cool engine. Now, my understanding of what that is, is that the F-35, as compared to its contemporaries like a Raptor and F-15 and F-16, has quite a fat, high bypass ratio turbofan, meaning that the or hot gases which come out of the engine at six seven hundred degrees here are surrounded in a jacket of cold non-combusted air around it which will shield that core plume so a seeker head looking towards the plume will not see it as hot or not as hot but again that is not a new idea 50 years ago the a10a was doing the same thing, it had an even higher bypass ratio turbofan. If we take a look at the back here, you can see the core engine plume there, 600, 700 degree plume coming out there, and a huge cold air jacket around it coming directly from this first stage fan here would surround that core air and make it look colder. But even this, which is much colder than an F-35 engine, is vulnerable to man pads. We saw old Mark I Iglers shooting at and hitting A-10s in the 1991 Gulf War. So it's very hard to fool these man pads completely. Which leads us on to what we're doing today. It's kind of a hodgepodge of experiments. We are in Cairo. We've got a bunch of man pads here. Two types we're going to look at today. The American Stinger. I'm not sure which block it is. I'm going to guess it's a relatively modern one. Uh, and we have an Igla S here, the Russian equivalent. Both IR seekers, both with a maximum ceiling of about 12,000 feet. We've got a whole load of aircraft we are going to fly past. Those man pads, as you can see here, we've got 5th gen aircraft, a Raptor, an F-35 4th gen. We've got attack planes like the Harrier, uh, the A-10, uh, fighter planes like the F-15, F-14, F-16, uh, Korean era planes, Sabre. We've got World War II piston planes. Don't forget, piston planes also have a plume as well, viewers. Their exhaust manifold pops out lots of hot air, which is going to be easily visible. What about a plane with a car engine in it, or more or less, a kind of 200 horsepower car type engine generating car exhaust type heat? Is that going to be vulnerable? What about a turbojet with low power? Will that generate enough of a heat plume to be shot down? What about toughness if we look at the frogfoot here and the a10 will they accept multiple shots like has been incited in real life and survive what about helicopters they have turbo jet slash turbo fan engines some even have suppressors look at this uh, french gazelle it has a suppressor here on the back which blows the heat plume up into the blades which then dissipates it downwards how effective is that going to be well we're going to model it all today in core dcs i've not set any particular format so we'll just start flying and seeing what happens. Why don't we start first with the fifth gen idea and it's probably what's going to bring viewers into watching this. We're going to try an F-35 uh, and F-22 as best as we can model it in DCS. Does anyone not think that we're going to shoot these down with ease, assuming they're flying within the envelope of the man pads, uh, just to say a few thousand feet at a few hundred knots? I think they're gone. I think they're going to get shot as well. Welcome in viewers, we have two types of man pads we're going to be using today, the Igla S from Russia and the Stinger 
from America. Now, doing these tests scientifically is actually quite hard for us because there are so many variables. What about the altitude of the aircraft, the aspect of the aircraft, the speed of the aircraft, the throttle modulation of the aircraft, whether the aircraft evades or not, whether the aircraft flares or not, and probably a whole bunch of other stuff I haven't even thought about. So we'll start with the F-35, I think, do a series of tests varying those variables and see what data we get. Then we'll start varying the aircraft. So first, Simba, F-35A, please, about 4,000 feet, about 350 knots, no dodging, no flaring. Let's just do a control test to make sure we can shoot the F-35 down. Unfortunately, viewers, I can't zoom in. I've got no way of zooming in, so you're just going to have to see us truck a small dot along the sky. All right, I'm in. All right, everyone try and find him. There he is, visual. Right, as soon as you can, fire. It's These missiles can fire head-on viewers, but they prefer a rear-on shot. Let's see what happens. Fox 2, poor old Simba, poor old Simba, absolutely taken to pieces, uh, uh, a plane like that is not going to probably only survive, probably not even uh, Yep, I'm right. alive, but I am definitely not very flyable. Yep, uh, we're going to rerun that, this time I'm going to ask you to go as fast as you can Simba, probably six or 700 knots, full power, and let's see if we have any problem shooting him, I doubt we will, but got to do the science. You let us know when you want us to uh, start firing. Right. I am nose hot. Let us know your speeds. 600 knots. 600 knots. That's a fast plane. Nearly my home. Oh, Sorry, Missile Simba. Missile out. 650. No dodging. Look at the missiles having to do some maneuvers to cope with this speed. Yeah, no problem at all, yep. Simba. No I'm problem hit. at all. Interesting, it hasn't actually fully destroyed him, as you can see, but it's a damaged plane. It's not going to do any missions now. Next test, altitude. We don't need to try how high altitude because we know if he goes above 12,000 feet or so, we won't be able to hit him. But why don't we try low altitude coupled with speed? This time, Simba, when you're ready, can you come at us fast and very low? Roger, 660, 200 to 100 feet, basically city top, and I am nose hot. All right, guys, find him and fire at him. I see a pixel moving. Oh, dear Simba. Let's pull out. It's too good. It's just too good. I'm the speed. Yeah, well done. But the, these systems are so bloody good, Simba. Uh, it's one of those times where I wish I had a uh, pixel health bar, because uh, while I did hear the damage, I heard the explosions. I have all systems. Well, there, there is a small possibility that the proximity views on these missiles are struggling with such high speed. But let's treat it as a kill. I mean, it's been hit one way or another. It's, it's the mission's finished of the plane. This time we're going to introduce active flare countermeasures. Simba, I'd like you to fly the basic 4,000 feet, 350 knots with no maneuvering. But you can use as many flares as you want and you can start flaring whenever you want. I can't get a tone. With the flares, I can't get a tone. I don't have a tone either. You know when I said I can't get a tone? I lied. Oh, we duped them! Simba! Best Simba. Look at that. It's duping them. That's it. I'm reload. Look at the bottom reload time. It takes ages to reload views. I don't think we're going to hit him. Rear aspect. He's more vulnerable in rear aspect, guys. Oh, no, no, I can't get a shot off. I can't get a shot off. It drives me hard to do this. Fox 2. He's out of flares. He's out of flares! Stop by Simba! Right. The science says so, guys. Are you... Yeah, well, have a look at him as on fire. Yep. The That's science... Have damage. Yeah, so those flares 100% got rid of all of those man pads. So that's interesting, guys. Right, so flares are 100% effective. Next, viewers, uh, we're going to try maneuvering and throttle modulation. So this time, Simba, use only maneuvering and throttle modulation. So you can come on the throttle or you can come off the throttle as you see fit to increase or decrease the size of your plume. And you may maneuver to help shield your plume, both of which are things. Again, I apologize that I can't kind of zoom in and see him, viewers. This is the best we get, unfortunately. All right, I'm nose hot. All right, let's go. rolling he's modulating his throttle the best he can one dodged oh no it's one too hit. hard two it's hit. too hard it's too hard yeah you did dodge one i saw one dodge all right finish him off boys finish him off
Oh, wow. How many? That killed me. Five. Four, five, six. Remember, each one, they're not going to uh, uh, obliterate the plane viewers. Each one's just a large hand grenade. But like I said, it will jam surfaces. It will cause problems with the plane. So it will take it down. Right, interesting, guys. Roger. Viewers, we're trying something different now. A piston aircraft, a Yak-52. I've actually flown one of these aircraft in real life, and they are freaking amazing aircraft, I can tell you that. Uh, generates about 300 to 400 horsepower, depending on the prop. Nine-cylinder radial. Uh, so bigger than a car engine. I guess similar to maybe a lorry engine in terms of the power and the heat produced. Are we going to be able to target that? Well, let's see. I see him. Yeah, right, far it will. Now, when it's making a much smaller heat plume than that jet we saw just now. So when is the Stinger going to be able to lock into onto him? Is the Stinger going to be able to lock onto him? I'll show you the plane viewers. It's this. Oh, that's him. Uh, it's a Russian trainer, also an, an uh, aerobatics plane. Sorry about the shading. It is bugged and there's nothing I can do about it. Tone, anyone? No tone. He's going to survive for this. We're yeah, rest. Jock went up to Yak 52, best 52. Yeah, apparently, if you want to operate in... Oh, Simba, a thing's happening. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. You're not worried about it? I'm not sure you've even got a damage model in that plane, so I wouldn't worry about it. Oh, he does have a damage model! <laughs> yeah, person... I've got a banging sound, and suddenly I see flames. First experience, they are actually quite a ruggedly built plane. Oh, one went right by you. Now, some are actually and I am missing viewers. losing fuel out of the right side. Now, some have actually missed viewers because it's a not a very good heat source for one of these Stinger missiles. That's interesting. All right, uh, what have we proved there? That it's much harder to lock onto a much smaller heat plume, as well as that some of the missiles will miss. Missile reliability, seeker head reliability goes down, but he is not 100% safe, um, and he will get shot down. Uh, let's try something different. Welcome in viewers. Next test is going to be the A-10. Designed to operate at low level in contested areas. Designed to operate in man pad infested areas. We're going to test several things here. What about the toughness of the airframe? Will it accept multiple hits? Probably. What about the cool engines? The high bypass ratio engines we talked about? Is that going to affect the detection? Probably. What about the copious amounts of flares? Let's see how that works. Simba, I'll allow you to do anything you want. As many flares Roger. as you want, as many barrel rolls as you want. Let's go. I decided you may want to see something other than the man bad viewers, so... Uh... Well done, Simba. Don't show the friggin' man bad. Keep firing. Cold aspect is going to be harder. Man pads are busy reloading. Oh, they got him! I wanted to both engines out. That is unfortunate, Simba Wimba. Well, it just shows, even an A10 on a cold aspect, the flares are not going to shield it. And they finished him off. Great demonstration. You you dodged the whole first barrage of, the, of them, though, Simba, so well done. Next, viewers, we are in that Simba. This is, oh, you're very handsome, but very young Simba. Uh, this is me in the front. We're in an uh, aerobatic plane. Uh, it has about 200 horsepower. It makes very little heat, very small heat plume. Is this going to make a difference? Simba, I'm going to allow you to do anything you want. All the dodges it is an aerobatic plane at the end of the day. Uh, let's see if we can fool these uh, these seeker heads. We'll just head straight into the action. All right, far it will, guys. Who's Will? Some douchebag. Guy in the back here. Oh, hey, douchebag is an acceptable mm. term of acknowledgement. I can't see squat. Huh. Well, I did that word well, didn't it, Simba? <laughs> <laughs> do, not use, do not use an aerobatic plane. I mean, you, do, you die in style, don't get me wrong, and it's moderately cheap, moderately compared to an F-35, but I wouldn't advise it. Next, viewers, World War II Warbird. We've got a BF-109K4 crew first here. It is a juiced uh, V-12, I think even inverted V-12. I've forgotten. Basically a piston engine, but a big one. All right, far it will. Good luck, Simba Wimba. Good maneuverability, good wing loading, but also they are not picking you up. So, you nope, know, they you, got me. You know I said they weren't picking you up, Simba. I lied. I'm bleeding out. You are. Call my mom. 
Mr. Simba. Your son is about to go splat. Huh. Oh, you made it out, Simba. I'm so proud. Next, viewers, a Cold War relic. Uh, 1960s, 1970s, MiG-21. Um, I can't think of any signs for this. It's obviously going to get shot down. It's a hot engine. Um, and it's got... Well, in its current configuration, it's got no flares. So... But it's cool. So we're going to do it. Another thing about these missiles, viewers, is they're very small, very lightweight, and therefore very maneuverable. Game on, boys. Game on. Fire at will. Very hard to dodge kinematically. Yeah, that was a bit stupid, really, wasn't it? You survived. There's an example of a plane flying and surviving. It is also a notoriously toughly built plane. And the boy's only got one shot on it. I wonder why that was. Guys, I'm going to reset and do that one again because it's that's interesting. They only got one shot on you. Okay, viewers, we're trying that one again. Uh, we've fully reset the server this time to make sure no bugs have got through. Uh, I don't see any reason why the MiG-21 should be good at this. Reload. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're working better this time. No dodging that, Simbas! Mashy boom boom. Mashy boom boom. No, it didn't stand a chance. Amazingly, it took two It says, I destroyed the Igla. <laughs> that's the way the Russians do it, Simba. It destroys missiles. Destroy of missiles. And amazingly, it survived again. Well, this, if nothing else, shows that toughness it has a quality of its own, Simba. And aggressiveness. All around aggressiveness. Uh oh. Uh oh. Come on, outrun the missile. Outrun the missile, Simba. Outrun the missile. Yes! Yeah! Simba, best Simba. Nice. Well, that was weird, viewers. Uh, it was moderately hard to shoot. Why was it hard to shoot down, guys? I wasn't playing that time. I think it's just fast. And another thing is... Relatively small and yeah. fast. Optically small. For a man pad to work, you have to see the thing with your eyes. So it's small, fast, made it hard to target. And then it's toughness to sh shred it off the missiles. All right, very good, guys. Uh, why don't we try the opposite to small? Let's go for big. Well, let's go for a freaking Tomcat. So the science is uh, ramping down now, viewers. Uh, we're in for more kind of fun now. So Simba, do whatever you want within reason. Viewers, another Cold War relic. We have the F-14B. Uh, this version from the 1980s Fleet Interceptor. And all-round badass. Is it going to be good against man pads? Almost certainly not. It is big. Easy to see. Easy to hear. And we'll have a huge thermal plume. All right, game's on. Simba versus all man pads. Like the MiG, we're just doing it by brute force now. Simply using decoys. Oh, look at that. It's just the speed and the altitude of the thing. Are they going to get a shot? Are they going to get a shot? They didn't get a shot. Nope. Wow. All right. Not enough time to get a lock on. He's presenting himself. Out. I killed myself watching the missile. <laughs> you crap. That's the power of the thing. Same as a MiG. It's so powerful. Tomcat best kitty cat. It does appear that, guys. Again, I'm not sure there's any real science behind it, but it just shows that if you do go low and fast enough, you can escape them. But going low and fast has its own hazards, viewers. You can crash into trees. You can have all sorts of other problems. You can have uh, AAA shooting at you. All right, very good. Right, uh, let's get back to the science side of things, viewers. This time, I think we'll try a Harriet, viewers. It has a high bypass ratio turbo fan, but it has very different nozzles, four vector thrust nozzles rather than a traditional one or two rear-facing nozzles. But will that make any difference? I doubt it, but I guess we'll try it. Uh, right, Simba, just fly straight and level, please, and let's just see if they can lock onto you and fire at you. Yeah, and it is going to be a pretty delicate aircraft as well, but it's a shrug it off. Well done. Engine problems. Yeah, that's been shot. Single engine plane, it probably wouldn't survive, and another missile's out now. Oh, yeah, it's down. It's down.
All right, guys, I... just hit, hit my tail feathers. Why don't we try some rotary wings to see how that goes? Next, our first helicopter uh, is the Apache. Two relatively hot turbine engines. Let's see how it does. Guys, we're just going to fly straight level, a few thousand feet above you. We are not being shot at, Simba. I like it that way. Yes. Oh, there's Ooh, a lady ow, talking, ow. and yeah. I'm dead. Yeah, uh, sorry about that view. Oh, I have control, apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah, it didn't work. Why don't we repeat this one, Simba, but this time we can have flares. All right, retrying. I suggest you start pre-flaring, Simba. Pre-flaring, of course, just important as flaring when the missile's been fired. Missile duped. Well done. Missile duped. Well done. Missile duped. Oh, missile. <laughs> nope, that one got me. Yeah, fair enough. So it duped two of them, but the third one was not duped. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, why don't we try the Gazelle with its IR suppressor, guys? Next, the French Gazelle viewers has a smaller turbine engine. Uh, still quite hot, but it has a suppressor. Let's see how it makes a difference. Missed. Did it? Yeah, missed. It missed. I think you're going to make it. Missile. Missed again. How about that? Yeah, I think that's definitely the suppression system. And here. Ah, uh, damn. Well, it dodged just as many as the Apache flares just by having the suppression system. Sounds really good on that. That sounds just like a real gazelle. You damaged. Yeah, you're damaged. See if you can put it down, Simba. All right, we're going to have a recap there, viewers. Now, everything we've done today is, I would describe it as pseudo-scientific. Like I said, there's so many variables, it's hard to get this perfectly scientific. Uh, but we looked at uh, the various altitudes and speeds. Nothing really makes a difference unless you can really go really fast and really low and really cover the line of sight, which of course, yes, it will protect you at that point, but you can't guarantee it because it depends on variations in the topography and stuff like that. Flares, absolutely. What's the first one we tried flares on? The A... No, I've forgotten. But we tried flares and they worked well most of the times, although not... 100% of the time, so the Apache still got hit eventually. Uh, piston engines absolutely could get hit. You can't see them as far away, but you could still track them. So piston engines can still get hit. Helicopters absolutely can get hit. The suppressor does a great job on this aircraft, but still. Oh, the suppressor's blown, blown off the back. How about that? To be honest, I think we found everything that we would have expected to have found. Really just confirmed. Viewers, we better try the Raptor because I know you're going to want to see it. It won't be very good because it's got very hot engines and no real attempt to hide that. Simba, uh, why don't you have a bit of fun this time? Why don't you just try and beat it with uh, a bit of medium altitude, with some barrel rolls, with some throttle modulation, with some flares. Just kind of show off. Well duped. Wow, it's covered in the sky in hot flares, look. Oh, well duped, Simba. Oh, is it only itself to kill itself? Ah, <laughs> funny. Um, all right, viewers, I, I might just show one more thing myself, guys, which is my preferred way of beating man pads. If I'm attacking a point defended area, I'm going to do it in a Z-15 because it's a very hot aircraft with uh, not a great amount of defense. It's going to be quite hard to beat those man pads. I'm going to dive down on the target as if I were attacking it. I'm going to barrel roll when they start firing. I'm going to come off the throttle, modulate the throttle and plenty of flares. Let's see if I can beat those three guys. Some free flares out. Can they even get a lock on me like this? Missile 12 o'clock low. It's my MWS. 
basically what Simba was doing, off the throttle, barrel roll, use gravity, and your players. Now this is the harder bit, getting out at the end. You would go down and use the topography to hide here, but uh, why don't I do something a bit silly? Missiles, to the top. six o'clock high. Duped. Left oh, you got me. Fire. You got me, boys. Hold up. Right engine fire. Left engine I think I was only one shot. I shot twice. Ow. All right, viewers. Uh, a bit of science, a bit of fun. I hope you enjoyed that, and bye-bye.